Well, thank you very much, Alexander, new general manager. You, you know he was the New Zealand operations manager, but Mike and I were sort of reviewing Alexander's work and, and realised that he did everything, which meant he was the general manager. <laughs> so um, that's, that's how that came about. Um, as you can see, there's been some big changes in the Himalayan Trust. For, for a start, we've got these labels now. Um, you know, so you know who we are and what organisation we're involved in. I thought it was very innovative, Alexander, coming up with this location in a deep quarry in the side of an apparently extinct volcano. Um, you didn't mention that in the briefing of emergencies, but um, because I now understand that you know there is no such thing as an extinct volcano. Um, they're just waiting. <laughs> so here, here we are. But look, I mean, there's lots of excitement involved in all of this. And um, I have to say that the, the big excitement for us um, was uh, right up to the last day uh, getting our friends and colleagues from Nepal to New Zealand. Um, all the communications that were going backwards and forwards. Um, Pasandawa got his visa a long time ago. It was a multiple entry, good for long, many years. <laughs> However, uh, Mingma, Lakma and Renata, uh, they got absolutely nothing until the day before. We were chewing our fingernails, I can tell you. I was actually rewriting my speech about what sort of apologetic things I could say um, in, in the wake of uh, having this first time for us all together and then at the last minute, they're not able to, to be here. So we, we are truly delighted that, that you um, are here, that you've seen, the, uh, had a tour down on the South Island, and that you're now here with us up in Auckland. So a lot has happened um, between New Zealand and Nepal over the last year, and I guess it has centered very much around the global pandemic. Um, it, it's been hard to travel, I mean, as some of you probably know, I do work in the travel industry. I, I ended up going on an Antarctic trip uh, in December, um, and that trip to, uh, to Antarctica and back involved 19 PCR tests. You, yeah. you just feel like a pincushion I mean, um, of all these testings and the groveling and the nasal passages and all the rest of it. But thankfully, we're sort of coming out of that. We are getting back on the road. Um, and of course, we've got whom I trust and Paul represented here. And um, Alexander and Casey, our marketing manager, uh, will be joining me uh, in the hall uh, in early November, which we certainly look, look forward to. So um, we're very keen. Um, to, for the first time in three years, I, I can hardly believe it's going to be three years since I've, I've been in Nepal, and I, I think it really shows how valuable these video calls have been. When you know people well, you know the office they're sitting in, and you're talking to them about places that you know well, um, those video calls have really got us through the last three years very, very well. And, um, you know, um, Pasan, Bingma, Lakta, uh, Mahendra, and many other members of the team heading out into the field. I, I spoke to them on one occasion out on the field. Um, it's really made a difference um, to how we've felt in touch with what's going on, particularly with the education programs that we partner with um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, and Trade. So we're looking forward to this this trip immensely. Um, the objectives for that will be not only to see how everything's going, but for Alexander and Casey um, to come back with a, a lot of photographic and video material that we can use for events um, going forward. We're going to be accompanied by Mike Chisholm from EduTech, and uh, we're really delighted with this partnership. Um, they are putting in and have designed a series of computer laboratories for schools. Uh, they've been adapted to situations where, you know, maybe in some villages there isn't electricity, so they've got to have that capability to generate their own. Um, and look, we, we just acknowledge the fact that in the 21st century, 
Uh, literacy is a fine thing to have, but in the 21st century, you, you've got a high, a high level of IT uh, competence as well. So we see these as very important additions to what we can offer people up into the solar Kuru region. Fundraising for the Himalayan Trust really is our major focus. And with uh, Alexander and Casey, we've been focusing on this last year and actually saving uh, on a whole lot of expenses, whether it was um, partnerships with different companies for you know, IT provision, different things that we felt perhaps we could do without. Um, so sort of cutting back in a whole lot of areas. And the coming year is definitely going to be focused much more on the, the fundraising area, because really that's our critical role. Um, our partners in Nepal are the providers of expertise in the different areas that we work. This is the way a partnership should be, and we, we here are there to raise funds so that we can support this in a collaboration. Now, I think it's, it's a truly wonderful thing, this collaboration between New Zealand and Nepal. You know, when you think how it all started on Mount Everest back in the 1950s, you know, my father in Tenzing on the British expedition, the partnerships that, that came out of that, the friendships, um, and then eventually um, to our parents, Sarah's and my parents, uh, Ed and Louise, going out repeatedly several times a year, leaving us at home with different babysitters uh, as they uh, were involved in the building of small schools and, and hospitals up there in the Solar Kumbu. We have a, an incredible um, series of plans um, for next year, because 2023 is going to be the 70th anniversary of, of that first ascent. And in collaboration with Sir Graham Wrigley of the Himalayan Trust UK, and I'm in touch with him almost daily at the moment, um, we're setting up a number of events. And of course, our partners, Himalayan Trust and Paul, are very closely involved in this, um, whether it's the completion of the Serpentinary Visitor Centre and the original schoolhouse at, at Kunjung School, or the celebratory events that are going to occur around this time. And we are going to celebrate. The local communities are going to put on some wonderful welcomes, um, dinners, uh, celebratory events for the opening of the centre of the school, the opening of the Tenzing Centre down at the National Park headquarters in Namchi. This will all occur on the 28th and 29th of May, so the anniversary of, of the great climb itself. Um, we then will go out to Kathmandu. Uh, the British ambassador is going to host um, us on the 3rd of June at, at the British Embassy in Kathmandu for a celebration there. We then move on to New Delhi, where both the New Zealand and British High Commissioners will host us in New Delhi for what we hope will be quite a major celebration of, of that 70th anniversary. And then we move on to London and uh, an event at the Royal Geographical Society um, with the attendance of the members of the Hillary and Tenzing families. The numbers seem to just keep going up and up. It must be resonating quite well, I think. Um, and then we have a special fundraiser for the Himalayan Trust UK in the city of, of, of London. After that, we're, we're very keen to bring everyone back to New Zealand and have two fundraising dinners here in Auckland and in Christchurch. So lots of plans um, for the, the year coming up. I know, um, you know, it's going to continue to have its complexities. It's not as if the pandemic is over. I think we're managing with it better. People are vaccinated. Our systems in terms of freedom of movement have become probably more sensible and it's certainly easier to, to move around. Um, but that doesn't mean that the disease has gone away. And I guess we're going to have to continue to manage that um, as the Himalayan Trust. We've certainly seen some really awful impacts through our partners in Nepal. Um, you know, certainly I've spoken to some of you about the effects on our accountant there, Barween's family, was a, a really devastating example of the impacts 
of the beta strain in, um, in Nepal. So we're aware that this will continue um, to be a major challenge. But look, for us, um, we're delighted that we're, we're back out there. We're going to be heading into Nepal. We're going to really ramp up our, our fundraising endeavours. And we're delighted to have a young team running the Himalayan Trust. And they are, of course, my son Alexander, Hillary, and, and Casey Hemingway, who you've got at the back. I think it's kind of nice to have a couple of young people who, in fact, aren't even 30. Um, I remember being 30. I wish I could still be 30. But, um, I wish anyway. I could still remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, look, um, thank you everyone for you know being part of the Himalayan Trust for the support um, that you, you give the organisation. Frankly, we can't do it without you. It is a critical part of, of what the organisation is and what it does. So I'd like to hand back to uh, Alexander.